Hey folks, so last month ML.NET 2.0 was released. Now, if you're not familiar with ML.NET, that is the open source machine learning library for the .NET platform. So I can use my C Sharp or F Sharp or VB code to train machine learning models, just like I could in another language. I can also use the same languages to take a pre-trained model or one I've trained myself and use it in an ASP.NET or other type of application, such as UWP, Windows Forms, stuff like that, to generate predictions based on new data. So I don't have to use Python or JavaScript or some other programming language if I don't want to in order to add machine learning capabilities to my applications. Now, in this video, I want to walk you through one of my favorite, more improved features in ML.NET 2.0, and that is text classification. Okay, so uh, text classification is where we can take a piece of text and we can classify it. So let's say we might want to classify something as a positive thing or a, a negative thing. Um, we Text classification will do that. I polled my friends on the internet who are about as weird as me, and they suggested I write a example code using turtles. So that's what we're going to do. So <laughs> bear with me here. This one gets a little weird. So here I am in Visual Studio 2022 community, and I have a program.cs file with a few using statements. I have Microsoft ML, uh, ML Data, Torch Sharp, and NASBERT. Okay, so Torch Sharp is a Python machine learning uh, library, and NASBERT, well, that stands for, well, BERT, which is a, a you know, standardized transformer, and then NAS is like a, a more compressed version of it. So this is a very portable transformer that we can use to manipulate text. It's okay if you don't know what a transformer is, that's fine. Uh, just know that this is kind of a big deal. It's a big pre-trained model that we're able to take advantage of. Now, in order to use this stuff, I have to have a few NuGet references. So uh, if I right-click on my project, say Manage NuGet Packages, I go in and I look at my installed packages, and I see I've got Microsoft ML, uh, ML Torch Sharp, and Torch Sharp CUDA Windows. Okay, So ML is the core uh, you know, ML.NET library, and Torch Sharp lets me do some things with the text uh, classification. And this CUDA Windows thing, well, that lets me take advantage of Windows-based GPUs. There's a Linux uh, version of this as well. So you can use that while you're training to get a little bit more efficient training. Now, it does take a little bit of time to install this thing. It took about 5 to 20 minutes, I, I recall. So it does take a while to get that installed because you're actually downloading and installing NASBERT, and that's a pretty hefty boy. Okay, So let's look through the code for this. We have our using statements. and a lot of this code is going to be very standard ML.NET code. The first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to create an ML context. ML context is the standard object that everything flows through in ML.NET, uh, and we need it in order to do anything at all with machine learning. Now we are telling it which GPU to use, uh, which you know kudos to you if you got multiple ones, but zero should probably be fine for most people. And if you don't have a compatible uh, GPU, well, we can always just fall back to the CPU as well. Okay. So that gives us our context, and from that context, we can now go ahead and we can start loading some data. So here we're going in and we're loading in an, a data view. This is an iData view. This is basically a, a data frame kind of object. You're familiar with pandas or some other type of data manipulation library. But here we're loading it from a text file, specifically this turtles.tsv, tsv meaning tab separated values. And the delimiter for a tab separated value file is going to be a tab character. I'm saying this particular thing doesn't have a header. That's because I don't have a row at the top of this file with like labels on it. So this turtles.csv file, or sorry, tsv file, is just a collection of sentences and then a, um, a number here. So this number here is, it actually corresponds to an intent. So in this application, the user might say something related to turtles, because again, my friends are weird, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> and that thing might be related to, uh, do they want to eat a turtle? Do they like turtles? Are they talking about something unrelated but happens to tangentially deal with turtles? Are they talking about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Or are they just talking about general turtle care? So we get about five different buckets that my friend's statements uh, fell under. And so I represented all of that in an enum. Okay? So this we're loading that up into, a into this data view. And we're representing each row with a model input class. Model input here is a really simple class that has a sentence and it has a label. Now this sentence here, it gives it, uh, it tells it, hey, you're the first column and you're the second column I see. We're also giving it a label, which we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute. 
uh, but this is a really simple C-sharp class that happens to have some ML.data uh, annotations on it to help it understand how to load the file up. Okay. So this right here gives us a data view containing all of our data from our tab separated value file. So that's how we load our data. Now next we want to start training our data. And in machine learning in general, we will split our data into a training set and a test set. And with those two halves, or actually usually they're not halves, there's 80-20 usually, um, we'll give the, the training data set to the process while it's actually training the data, and we will keep the 20% left over to see how good of a model it is at handling unknown values to prevent overfitting. Okay? So here what we're doing is we're actually going in and we are uh, splitting together the, uh, the data view, the, the data we loaded, and we're saying, hey, I want to only get 20% of it into my test fraction, 80% of it's going to go into the training fraction. And then I'm, I just have this little variable here to grab out the training data and the test data. And with that, we can now start to use it to actually train our model. We're going to see that in a little bit here. Okay. So this is this is dividing our data into two chunks, 80 and 20 percent. Next, we're going to go in here and we're going to actually create the pipeline. The pipeline is a reusable way of training machine learning experiments in a consistent way. So it's a series of steps. Uh, there's a couple steps here to map values to keys. This is really just kind of relabeling things the way that uh, uh, ML.NET expects them to be right, for our text classification step. And the next thing that we're doing here is we're actually going in, we're doing text classification. So this is what's actually going in using NASBERT. It is saying, hey, you've got a bunch of sentences with labels. I'm going to learn the ins and outs of what makes a given sentence have this specific, uh, this, <laughs> this specific numerical label, uh, and I'm going to kind of internalize that. Right now, the only BERT architecture that's supported is Roberta, but we have this enum here for future expansion if we wanted to add some more. Okay, um, So that's kind of what we got going on with this. This, this actually gives me my, my pipeline. Uh, it's not actually training anything yet. So to actually train our model, we have to go in and say, hey, pipeline.fit, and we fit it to the training data. That's the 80% of the data that we loaded up earlier. So this is going to synchronously wait and train our model and until it's, it's kind of memorized the patterns in there and it has this, this formed model, which we call a transformer or iTransformer in uh, ML.NET. Once we have this, we can, we can actually save it out to disk as a zip file or another format and load it up later on. This, this stuff usually takes a long amount of time but once we have a trained model, it's usually very quick to load it up and, make, and use it to make predictions. But before we use it, we should see how well it performs. So we can actually get some metrics out of there. So what we do is we go in here and we say, hey, like, hey, I want to I wanna grab my test data set. This is the 20% we left over. Uh, and I want to transform it using my pipeline. And then I'm going to evaluate it. So I'm going to call ML context, multi-class classification. Multi-class here meaning that we have actually five different possible classes that something can be in. Um, if it was only two, it would be binary classification. But in this case, it's five, so that's multi-class. Anything three or more is multi-class. If it's just two, it's binary classification. If it's one or zero, well, what are you even doing here? That's not a thing. Uh, so multi-class classification, we're saying like, hey, I want to see how accurate we are at predicting various things. And that's going to give us some metrics, which gives us uh, macro and micro accuracy, uh, log loss, uh, and a number of other things. But what's really cool about this, and the, the, the metric that I use the most, is the confusion matrix. And we have one of those as well. So here I have some code to actually loop over all of my turtle intents and kind of print out like a zero, you know, liking turtles, one, eating turtles, that kind of thing, um, just to, to print them out to the user. But then on, over here on line 68 over here, I've got this get formatted confusion table. And what this is doing is it's actually using ML.NET to generate a confusion matrix so that we can see it and see how our model performs. And I'm going to actually just run this and we're going to take a look at that confusion matrix and just sort of see what that looks like. Okay, so it looks like it's generated it. We have our confusion matrix. Again, I didn't have to write any code to format any of this stuff here. My only code that I wrote was really to loop over all these different classes. But here we see, um, here's the actual value something was. So here's a case where something actually was you know, an intent, uh, they were they're talking about eating turtles. And we see that our model uh, predicted it was eating turtles 26 times. But two times it actually predicted they were talking about something completely unknown. So in general, we're pretty good at recognizing that intent. So our recall is 92%, right? Um, 
Now, that's you know that's 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 pretty good. Um, now we go over here. We can kind of see some of the strengths and weaknesses, and we see over here like hey, here's an eight right here. So sometimes when something is a Ninja Turtle reference our model predicts that you were trying to eat the turtle. Somebody's talking about eating the turtles. So uh, there are some uh, inaccuracies there. And in fact, it's more likely to get it wrong than right in that case. But this is a confusion matrix. I have a whole another video and article about confusion matrices if you're interested, um, but really handy way of seeing how good your model is and what strengths and weaknesses it has. Okay. So once you know you have a good bat model and you wanna go forward and use it to generate predictions, well, you can do that pretty easily. So what we do is we create a prediction engine. So we say ML context model, create prediction engine. We tell it what type of row it's gonna get in as an input and what type of, of value it should get out as an output. In this case, we're calling it a model output. It doesn't have to be named that, but generally the auto-generated stuff is used model input and output from what I've seen. Um, and this really is just the same stuff where we have a, a label and a sentence um, and we have predicted label and score. So these are the two new things that we get from a model output. We get the label that we're predicting it to be. And again, label here is gonna be like, uh, we're talking about liking a turtle or caring about the turtle or ninja turtle, something like that, right? That's that uh, here, it's a float, but this is actually going to be uh, the enum value, okay? And the score, this is an array of scores for all the different intents. So for us, we have five different uh, classes something could be in. It's, it could be an array of five numbers. The one with the highest score is going to be the one that gets picked. Um, so I can see, help you see like how, you know, how close were these two things together and, and, and is this clearly different than the other intents and that kind of thing. Um, so once you have the prediction engine, now you can actually go through and use it to, you know, uh, make some predictions. So here I've actually got a do while loop where I'm going in and saying like, hey, what do you want to say about turtles? Uh, and it's going to generate a prediction using engine.predict. I'm creating a new model input based on what the user is saying. And I'm then calling engine.predict, giving it that, and I get out a model output, which then lets me go in and say, like, hey, here's the intent that we that we matched. And I can even get the score if I wanted to see that as well. These scores, they don't really range from zero to one in my experience. They really are just relative to each other. So they're not as reliable or useful as something that might be more percentage based. So keep that in mind while you're, while you're writing that. And this is basically just gonna loop until the user chooses to, to quit. Okay, so uh, I'll run this and fast forward it until we have a trained model and we'll take a look. Okay, so our model is now trained, uh, fairly similar to the last one it looks like, some slightly different characteristics. Um, so what do I wanna say about turtles? Well, let's say, that I like turtles. In this case, it says like, hey, yeah, I think I think that you're talking about liking turtles. That's great. Um, let's talk about heroes in a half shell. And in this case, it got it wrong. That should have been a Ninja Turtles reference, but it says it says unknown. Um, sorry, Peta, but I'm gonna try to test the uh, uh, the eating turtle intent. So I'm going to say, um, tonight I dine on turtle soup. And again, unknown. Uh, the testing data for this, the training data for this is not the best. I kind of got my friends to give me random statements and it's not as balanced as you might, might expect in a real data science experiment, but it's good enough to show us how to run with this stuff. We'll try one more. Uh, uh, turtles are our friends. And again, unknown. Okay, so <laughs> I could use some better training data here. Um, and if you had better training data, you're gonna see uh, just a better output in general uh, because your, your results are really gonna only be as good as your training data. The key thing here that's different for the text, uh, text classification is we're using this text classification stuff right here. We're telling it, hey, what's the, what, what did the user type in and what, what label do I wanna predict? Okay. This is really, really handy if you're building like a chat bot or something like that and you, the user might give you an utterance of something they might say and you have one of a few different commands you might map it to. You could use something like Azure Cognitive Services uh, with conversational language understanding or the older uh, Lewis uh, or Luis, depending on your pronunciation, uh, language understanding. Uh, those things will, like, will give you this capability without you having to write a whole lot of code at all. 
you are paying per usage for that. And so if you're like me and you want to write some unit tests that happen to involve classification, well, this is free, right? This is very, very free. You're just spending your time on it. You have to understand this code. But once you go through this code, this flow a few times, it doesn't, it's not as scary. So uh, I hope that helped you understand a little bit more about text classification in ML.net. If there's anything in ML.net you're curious about or machine learning in general, let me know. Give me a comment. I'm always happy to add something to my queue of uh, content cre to create. And, um, you know, happy coding and uh, have fun.